You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, episode number 219. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Well, hey there. Welcome back to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Porterfield, and I am thrilled that you're here today. Today's episode is all about Instagram stories and how to use this fast-growing platform to build your email list. Now, I don't know about you, but Instagram is by far my favorite platform, mostly because I love Instagram stories, but also because I think the connections on Instagram feel more real than any other social platform. Just my opinion, but maybe you agree as well. As for Instagram stories, if you are on Instagram, then you've probably either recorded an Instagram story yourself, viewed one or several, they are completely addictive, or you've heard someone else talk about Instagram stories and you weren't really sure what the heck they were talking about. Wherever you fall in this equation, there's one thing that is certain. You as a business owner can and should be using Instagram and Instagram stories to create more solid, real connections that will go far beyond just chatting on social media if you do it right. Now, speaking of doing it right, today, my guest is Tyler J. McCall, an Instagram expert that is going to share a step-by-step strategy to grow your email list using Instagram stories. And let me just tell you that this strategy that Tyler's going to share has nothing to do with the swipe up feature on Instagram stories. So if you don't have it, you're good to go because we're not even going to use it in this strategy. Tyler's own Instagram stories are a perfect example of how to do it right. And he's going to break all of it down for us on today's episode. Now, before we get there, since today is all about list building, this episode is sponsored by my free masterclass, the ultimate list building catch up plan. My proven three stack system for leveraging the most powerful what's working now list building strategies without the stress and tech confusion or crazy overwhelm. Go to amyporterfield.com forward slash list building to sign up for the free webinar. Now, if you're struggling to get started with list building, or if you just aren't sure where to start, or you've been trying to list build, but nothing seems to be working, you've got to get on this free masterclass, amyporterfield.com forward slash list building. Okay, so Tyler is officially in the house, so let's get this mini training started. It is guaranteed to be jam-packed with value, so let's do this. Tyler, welcome back to the show. First off, I cannot tell you how many people have told me how helpful your content was around making money through online workshops. They reference it with me all the time in my Facebook groups, which was episode 201, how to make money without webinars. My students love step-by-step and you did not disappoint. So I'm so happy you're back with us today talking all about your specialty, helping entrepreneurs grow their businesses with Instagram, specifically how to grow your email list through Instagram stories. Now, I know you have some really good examples of doing just that, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, tell my listeners a little bit more about you and your online business. Well, hello, Amy. Thank you for having (laughs) me on today. So excited. Um, I'm so excited. This is literally a dream come true. Uh, So I'm so, so excited to be here and so grateful for you. So um, my name is Tyler J. McCall, and I help folks use Instagram in a really intentional way to grow their business and grow their list. And I do that through an online community called the Follower to Fan Society. And I've been on Instagram for a number of years, and I've been teaching folks how to use it for business since 2015. Tyler, I love what you're doing on Instagram. Give us a little bit of your personal background too, because on Instagram, we get to see your family. We get to see the fact that you just made a big move, right? Tell me a little Mm -hmm. bit about that. Yeah. So my partner, Eric, and I moved to Chicago at the kind of fall of 2017 from North Carolina. I was a born and bred North Carolinian, had never left the state or lived. I mean, I left the state, but (laughs) (laughs) 
I had never lived outside of North Carolina um, until last year. And and yeah, so my background is in, before I did this whole social media thing, I was in the nonprofit world, did a lot of work around volunteerism, community organizing, and working with nonprofit organizations to help communicate their causes online and in person. And I'm really excited because I get to pull all of that work and all of that experience into what I do now with building communities online. You know, I didn't know that about you, but it makes perfect sense. You really are all about serving and supporting. So that's just running through your blood in your past life as well. So, okay, now it's all starting to make sense. This is perfect. <laughs> yes. All right. So let's dive into our topic today, how to grow your email list through Instagram stories. Many of my listeners probably use stories to some degree, but for those who've never ventured out into Instagram Storyland. Briefly tell us about an Instagram story. Like, what is it? How we find them when we're on Instagram, and how many people are using stories, both personally and for business. Okay, so Instagram Stories has been on the scene since August of 2016, and I'll be honest, Amy. When Instagram Stories came out, I was so annoyed because <laughs> I was just starting to figure out Snapchat. <laughs> uh, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. It was like, okay, it was this platform. Everyone was on it. I was trying to figure it out. Most of what I was doing on, was on Instagram, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to give Snapchat a whirl. And then Instagram stories just completely ripped off Snapchat. Totally. Which Instagram has owned up to that fact as well, <laughs> that they ripped <laughs> them off. So if you use Snapchat, you may, you'll, you'll be familiar with Instagram stories, but what it is, it's content shared in Instagram itself, typically photos and videos. You can also share text-based images. You can create them using Instagram or you can create them externally and upload them to your Instagram account. But the, the key thing here is that the content goes away after 24 hours, unless you add it as an Instagram story highlight to your profile, which is Literally a whole nother thing. That's like a whole episode of right? Instagram story highlights. That's a whole nother world. But what you need to know is that you can create this content and it goes away after 24 hours. Your photos or graphics last six, six seconds while your videos can be up to 15 seconds long. And I love it because it's literally one of the easiest pieces of content to create because Instagram has all of the creation tools built right in. You can create videos, stop motion. Um, you can do photos. You can type on the screen. You can do boomerangs. You can do reverse videos, all of these different cool types of content right on your phone. And you don't need any other software or any other tool. So that's one of the reasons I love it so, so much. I do too. And I love the fact that it goes away in 24 hours. It just mm -hmm. makes it feel a little less permanent. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can play around with things and experiment. And if you hate it, I've put stuff up that I'm like, I'm not loving this, but it's going away in 24 hours. So it's okay. Yes. And I think it's a really powerful tool for folks who are still, I know we've been talking about this for years, but they're still on the fence about using video in yes. their business. Yes. And okay, I get it. Going live is stressful right. or creating video content can be overwhelming, but an Instagram story literally disappears after 24 hours. So it doesn't matter what you do. If you look goofy, if your hair or makeup isn't done, it's going to disappear anyway. So it's a great way just to start trying out video in your exactly. business. Exactly. Love it. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about some stats. Okay. So this is the crazy thing about Instagram stories. It has grown dramatically just in the past few months. So as of early 2018, Instagram now has over 800 million users. They're on track to have a billion users within the next few months. Wow. And some of the reasons I love Instagram really come down to the fact that it's such an engaging platform. So of those 800 million people, 500 million are on the, the app every single day. So over half of Instagram users are daily active users. But here's the thing with Instagram stories. This is where this all comes into play. That's the fact that over 300 million Instagram users are on Instagram stories every day. So of the people who are on Instagram each and every day who are spending time on the platform, over half of them are actually on Instagram. Instagram stories. And I know we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but really what we're seeing on Instagram is that Instagram stories are taking over as the content of choice. And Instagram likes this. They like that we are creating stories because that gives them another place to run ads. And here's the other cool thing. As a business owner, as a marketer, Instagram story ads are a really powerful tool as well. But 
one of the best parts about Instagram stories from our perspective as marketers and business owners is that people are now spending more time on Instagram because of Instagram stories. Actually, the latest numbers are showing that Instagram users are adding an additional 10 minutes per day of time on the app because of Instagram stories. And actually with Generation Z folks, we're seeing them spend even more time, on average 13 to 15 minutes longer on Instagram because of Instagram stories. Oh my gosh, so many good numbers here. So 300 million people using Instagram stories every day. That's impressive. That number really is climbing quickly too, which I love. And I hate to admit it that I spend more than 10 minutes per day watching other people's stories. I love reality TV. I know I know you're in the same boat with me, Real Housewives, right? Like we're on the same That's page. Right. Okay, yes. so we love reality TV. And sometimes those Insta stories really feel like it. I feel like some of the best Instagram stories feel like reality TV. So they're a little bit hard not to watch when they're that good. So I love that so many people are watching them. You said something about Instagram stories are becoming the platform of choice for a lot of people on Instagram, and Instagram is definitely liking that, of course. So here's another thing. I think you do a really good job on Instagram of mixing the personal and the business. Like, I feel like I know your partner, Eric. If you ever come to my house, I feel like he's going to be my best friend. And that's what's so fun about Instagram. By the way, guys, if you're not following Tyler on Instagram, he is at Tyler J. McCall, M-C-C-A-L-L, at Tyler J. McCall. And I'm, of course, at Amy Porterfield. So we want to hear from you. Specifically, we want to hear from you in our DMs, but we're going to get to that a little bit later. (laughs) So, okay, Tyler, what does this huge popularity of Instagram stories mean for businesses and for the Instagram platform as a whole? So I think the first thing is just that recognition of the fact that Instagram stories have taken over. You know, a majority of folks on that platform every single day are now showing up on Instagram stories and consuming Instagram stories. And here's the other thing. I don't have any stats to back this up, (laughs) but I really feel like we know the more I look at the platform, the more I watch how I'm consuming content and how all of my students are consuming content. It's the fact that people are now spending more time watching Instagram stories than they're spending time scrolling through their feed. And I think that is a huge shift on Instagram and it really changes the way that any of us are using Instagram as a platform because If people aren't spending as much time in their feed, that means that in-feed engagement is decreasing a bit, that we may not have to create as much content or post as often because our content lasts so much longer now. And instead, we can put so much effort and energy into Instagram stories. So, Amy, I know you said you probably spend more than 10 minutes a day on Instagram stories. When you are on Instagram, where are you putting your time? Is it on Insta stories or is it scrolling through your feed? A million percent on the stories. Right. Yeah. Yes. Same thing for me and same for all of my students because they're just so they're so fun. They're so easy to consume. Uh, and it's just such incredible content. So that's a really, a really big thing for us to pay attention to as business owners. And as we know, video content is preferred more and more. And the reason I love Instagram stories so much is because this means that there are now millions of people every single day waiting for the right content to show up for them on Instagram stories. And Instagram stories are really the easiest way for your followers to directly message you and for you to open up a conversation with them. Instagram's actually told us that the stats show that one in five Instagram stories leads to a direct message. And for me as a business owner, that's an incredible opportunity to have the the chance to open up a conversation with my potential student, my potential customer or client, And the fact that people are just consuming these Instagram stories and I have the chance to have that conversation just means it's a no brainer for where I want to spend my time and and put some energy into marketing my business. Ah, you are so right. I like how you put it. There are millions of people every single day waiting for the right content to show up for them on Instagram stories. I always tell my students, it's so perfect or so important, I should say, that you find your avatar's pain point find a solution to help them and serve them well. And so if you're doing that, you're definitely putting the right content in front of them. And I like that we're talking about getting them to have a conversation with you, a direct message, so important. So 
I know you're going to take us through a step-by-step and actionable process, and I want all of my listeners right now, feel free to take notes because we're going to cover a lot of ground really quickly, but Tyler's been so gracious to put together a great freebie that I'll have in my show notes, or if you want to just go there directly because you don't want to miss anything, amyporterfield.com forward slash 219 download, amyporterfield.com forward slash 219 download. Okay, Tyler, let's get to it. You're going to teach us how to grow our email list through Instagram stories. So take it away. Okay. I'm so excited about this before. (laughs) Okay. Before we get all the way to the the list building strategy, I want to just take a few seconds to talk about creating really high quality Instagram stories because before we start trying to, you know, get people to join our email list, they need to actually watch our Instagram stories. Okay. Perfect. (laughs) So let's talk a little bit about how to create that high quality content. So I want you to think about as you're creating Instagram stories that you know what you hope to accomplish through your story and what you want your followers to do with your story. So I see a lot of folks creating Instagram stories right now without a purpose or intention, and they may just be showing bits or pieces of their day or what they had for dinner, what their kids are doing this weekend, a little bit of their work, all all these different types of content but there's really no purpose or strategy to them. And the best Instagram stories are going to be those that are created with that clear purpose in mind. And really the reason that we want to be strategic here on our Instagram stories is because we want people to watch them. So then we do have the opportunity to have these conversations. Now it doesn't have to be all about your business and what you do, because I mean, let's be honest, that can get boring after a while. Right. Um, Instagram stories can be about you, what you enjoy, your personal life. I mean, on my Insta stories, I talk about Instagram, but I also, you know, Eric and I do midday dance breaks on my, my Instagram My favorite. Story. Thank <laughs> you. Um, I'll talk about what shows we're watching because we are a reality television show. Let's just say we're fans. We're fans. <laughs> I was looking for house. the word junkie, but okay. I know, right? <laughs> I'll, I'll do my target run because I love a good target run. Like I'll share all those things on my Instagram story. But if you're creating those types of stories, there needs to be a purpose behind them. There needs to be a reason for what you're doing, whether it's to connect more with your followers or to allow them to see themselves in you or to create some common ground with them. Those those types of stories are really great for just getting your followers closer to you and what you do. So there's a method to all this madness. I'm going to break it down and make it really simple for you. And I call this creating a story arc in your Instagram story. And we're going to take it back to grade school. So I want us to think about what all good stories have. And if you go back to elementary school, I'm sure you can envision either something on the blackboard or maybe on an overhead projector of this outline of a good story. And you're going to see that your teacher has created this outline and they're going to tell you that all good stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the exact same thing is true with Instagram stories. So as you're creating Instagram stories, I want you to use the beginning of your story to set the tone for your followers. And you should really let them know at the very beginning in your first video or the first thing you're going to show on your screen what the story is about and what they can expect. And the reason we do this is because we want to give them an out from the very beginning. Like we don't want people to watch halfway through your story and then get annoyed that they've wasted their time because then they're not going to watch your stories in the future. So we want to make sure we're setting the tone at the very beginning, making it really clear what the story is about. And the reason we do this is because it is very annoying for our followers to come into a story halfway through an experience. They just can't, they can't figure it out. I know it annoys me. And okay, Amy, I have a question for you. Okay. And I don't mean to put Hobie on the spot. I know we all, <laughs> we're all fans of Hobie. We're waiting for Hobie's podcast to come out. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> but I want to hear from you. Have you ever been watching a movie or a show, maybe an episode of Real Housewives? <laughs> he won't. Hobie- we will not watch that. Oh, well, I am. Yes. Okay. If I'm watching it and Hobie walks in. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and he comes in halfway through and he starts asking you questions like, who's Sheree? Or what is Doreen <laughs> doing? Or why does she have a British accent? But she's from Connecticut, right? <laughs> Like, how annoying is that? You have to, like, pause the show. So annoying. I hate it. I hate when I have to, like, you're right, pause the show, explain everything to him, or and then he doesn't even care, but why is he asking? So then it's even more annoying. So, yes, I'm with you there. Okay, so that is the exact same thing you're doing to your followers when they're coming into your Instagram story and you've just decided to start the story in the middle of an experience or an Mm. activity or a lesson, right? It's so frustrating. So what they're going to 
do is they're going to learn, they're going to come to expect the fact that they are always going to be lost when they tune into your Instagram stories. So they're just not going to do it. I never even thought of it like that, Tyler. Okay, this is good. Keep going. This is good. So once you set that tone in the beginning and you started out building your Instagram story arc, once you get to the middle, this is where you need to take your followers through some experience, take them on a journey, show them something fun or meaningful or educational that they can use. And this is where you can answer their questions. You can even highlight your products or services here and talk about what you do. And what I want you really to focus on here is kind of what we all talk about when we're creating content for our communities is that that content needs to be engaging and actionable and valuable for the folks who have decided to follow us online. And you can really use this this space as a way to move your followers closer to you as you're creating this content. But here's a kind of a hot tip for you as you're creating Instagram story content. I want you to make sure you're diversifying your content. Maybe mix in a photo with a few videos, then maybe a boomerang, these different features that Instagram has built in for you, because that just keeps your audience engaged with the different types of content instead of just doing the same graphic or the same video or same talking head video over and over and over over again. So that's what you're going to do in the middle of the story is that's where really the content's going to come. But then the end of the story is so, so important. This is where we need to wrap it all up really nicely and put a bow on it because you need your Instagram story to have some kind of conclusion. Our brains literally cannot handle a cliffhanger. Like we need something at the end. We need a resolution at the end of our Instagram stories. And as you're creating your Instagram stories, you really want to finish it off because your followers at the, you know, if they're if they're learning that you are always starting your Instagram stories with no context, they can also learn that you never actually finish your Instagram story. So why would they watch it? Why would they watch it? In the, and again, because there's never any conclusion for them. I want you to get used to always wrapping your Instagram story up with some kind of conclusion. And there's, there's a few ways you can do this. You can build anticipation for what's next. So maybe you are doing a series of Instagram stories, or maybe you're getting ready to go on a trip, or you're getting ready to release a new product or service. Build some anticipation for the next day's Instagram story or the next day's content that's going to point to that. You can also use this at the end as a way to, you know, infuse that call to action into what you're doing. So point your followers to your feed. I love this strategy. Uh, maybe you start a conversation in an Instagram story and you finish the conversation in the post on your feed. And you're going to ask your followers to go to the post on your feed to either see the finished product or contribute an idea or answer a question for you. And then tell folks in the post on your feed to go to your Instagram story to learn more about this idea or to see the behind the scenes and you create this really great kind of system of people consuming all of your content. This also tells Instagram's algorithm like, hey, this person's really interested in what this person is doing. So heck, let's show them some more of their content in their feed as well. Or you can send them to a direct message. And we're going to talk about that next. But the direct message is such a really, it's such a vital part of what you're doing on Instagram in particular. And Insta stories allow you to open up that opportunity to have a conversation. So an example of kind of what happens when there's no conclusion. I actually had a student I was working with on Instagram stories and she was committed to doing them really well. And she started this Instagram story. She was going on a trip for her business and she kind of did like on the plane, getting to the city, checking into her hotel. She was like, I'm going to have a nice night in before my meetings tomorrow. I'm going to order room service, which I love. It's like, you know, one of the most fabulous things you can do for yourself And then her Instagram story ended. And I was so annoyed. I texted her and I demanded to know what she ordered for dinner. Because like, (laughs) why? Why would you start this Instagram story and take me on this experience and then not let me finish being a part of this experience with you? Right? I love it. That's a great example. We just get invested in these stories and we do want to know how it ends. Okay, this is good. I never thought of it this way. So I was so bothered. I was so annoyed with her. And that's how your followers are. Whenever you don't finish an Instagram story, it's annoying for them. And listen, I get it. Like life gets in the way. You're running businesses. You're raising tiny humans. You got a lot. You have real housewives to watch, right? Right. You have a lot going on. But at the same time, if you're going to start the story, you need to have some kind of conclusion for your followers because social media is all about building these expectations and building these habits with our communities. So whenever we do something like that, we're just telling them, 
you know, we're not committed to your experience with this content. So whenever we're creating our stories with those beginnings, a middle and an end, it really allows your followers to have this whole experience. They're more likely to watch the whole story. And they're also more likely to watch your content again and again and again. And what you're going to see is you're going to lose return viewers if you're always starting a story without any context or if you're always ending it without really any conclusion. You're not going to be able to retain your viewers if there's no strong content in the middle. You're going to see your numbers you know, drastically decrease. Maybe you have 100 people that watch the first part of your story, but if you're not committed to the content, by the third or fourth part of your story, it's down to 10 or 20 people. And that's not good. You want them to be retained throughout that whole experience. And then you want them to come back again and again and again. That's why that conclusion is so important. Okay. So I have some nuts and bolts kind of questions for you about what you just went over. Mm-hmm. The first question is, you know, a story could be three 15 second videos of a talking mm-hmm. head or some talking head, some images, whatever. But when you talk about beginning, middle and end, I'm getting nervous that it's like a 15 minute story with a bunch of clips, but like Mm -hmm. how long is too long and what does this look like? Okay. Such a good question because Instagram stories do get painfully long sometimes. Yeah. (laughs) So my rule of thumb and, and what I share with my students is you should never let the dashes turn into dots. And if you've <laughs> ever created or consumed an Instagram story, you know what I'm talking about. So across the top of a screen where someone's created an Instagram story, there are dashes that symbolize how many pieces of content are in that story. But if your dashes have turned to dots because you have so many crammed in there, it's way too much content. And I've kind of found the magic number for at least my community is around 10 to 12 pieces of content in a 24 hour period. Okay. So it's definitely something to test out with your community and what type of, you know, some folks may be really committed to what you're doing. I know uh, one influencer online shares really long Instagram stories and she even, she even kind of pokes fun at herself and calls her Instagram story viewers, the long haulers who make it all the way to the <laughs> end, which I love. Yeah. And she, she'll, she'll notice when it starts to get too long and she's like, okay, sorry, this is going to get really long. So she <laughs> warns people, but for my folks, it's about 10 to 12 pieces in a 24 hour period. It doesn't really matter about, it can definitely be too long, but if you're going to keep it shorter, it still needs to be really focused. You need to have that clear introduction, a clear kind of piece of content, something actionable or educational or valuable for folks. And then you need to wrap it up at the end. Even if you're just going to do, you know, two or three or four videos, you can still follow the same process. I love dashes turning to dots. That is so good. I can totally (laughs) see it. So next time I'm going to pay attention to mine just to make sure they don't get a little too long. So most of my listeners, though, are going to make them too short because they're not used to doing Mm -hmm. these. So this beginning, middle, end will actually extend the life of their story a little bit, which is a good thing. So I'm not too worried about most of my listeners because they're just getting started out with this. Now, here's my other nuts and bolts kind of question. I feel like when I watch your stories, your lighting is really good. Like most of the time you've got pretty amazing lighting. So what are you doing? Because my, my listeners always want to know about the technology side of it. Is there a light that you are standing in front of? Okay. So I'm standing in front of this incredible light that you can't buy because it's around us all the time and it's the sun. (laughs) Like don't you tease us with something that's (laughs) not out anymore. (laughs) I know. Right. No. So here's the thing. All of Instagram, kind of the whole world of Instagram, some of the best type of content you're ever going to be able to create in your feed, on your story, anything, sunlight, natural lighting is your best friend as you're creating that content. So I'm just really intentional as I'm creating my Instagram stories of always getting in front of a window as I'm creating that content. And if I, here's the other thing, if I'm going to create content when the lighting isn't ideal, I'll typically put a filter over it. So I'll typically, yeah. And that's also another, uh, in my, in my community, I talk with my students and kind of one of our fun little hacks with Instagram stories is if you want to do an Instagram story, but you, and I kind of force them to do Instagram stories, um, (laughs) but you're not feeling up to it today because maybe the hair or makeup isn't where you want it to be. That's a very common excuse for my students. Our rule of thumb is put a filter on it. A black and white filter will make you look incredible in ways you never dreamt possible. Yes. (laughs) You're so, so right. Okay. I love this. Stand in front of a window if you can, or natural lighting in any way. And if not, we're using a filter. Okay. One more question, something you do really well, Tyler, that I'm loving. 
words on the screen. Yes. Talk to me about that. Okay. So there are a few things we need to know. The first thing is on, it's actually a Facebook stat that, you know, 80% of folks on Facebook are watching video with no sound, right? So right. that stat's huge. So on Facebook, it's become really commonplace that we see captions or some kind of text on our screen with video, but on Instagram stories, we're not seeing it as much. And, you know, Instagram hasn't given us any hard and fast stats yet about how much people are or whether or not they're watching with the audio on or off. I started um, about a month ago doing kind of captions on all of my videos on Instagram stories. It started out as an accessibility thing. You know, in our community, we have members of our community who are deaf or hard of hearing or who may have some issues consuming content that they're hearing. So I'm really conscious as I'm creating content for my students that we're giving them different ways in which they can learn and consume that content. So it, that bled over into what I was doing on Instagram stories, like, heck, there are probably people watching me right now who can't hear, and they would love a caption, and they're going to stick around. And now it's become something that my followers love, because first of all, you know, they may be watching with the sound off. Secondly, you can sometimes read kind of the synopsis of the caption more quickly than listening to what someone's saying, and it really helps keep retention high. And that retention of your viewer from the first story until the very end of your story in that 24-hour period is one of those key metrics to measure to make sure what you're doing is actually working and that it's effective. And I'll also, I also believe that that retention is what kind of informs the algorithm for how people are seeing the rest of your content in Instagram. So captioning what you're doing, even writing a synopsis of what you're saying, or at the very least, just putting a few words on the screen that kind of summarize the conversation. So you're letting people know, I want to listen to this, or Ugh, I'm not interested in this. I'm going to swipe away from what they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I really love uh, putting those words on the screen. It's made a huge difference for my community. I know a lot of a lot of my students are doing that now as well. I absolutely love it. And I have a confession in that sometimes Hobie likes to watch some of our favorite shows at nighttime. Billions is one. Are you watching that yet, Tyler? I'm not. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So we watch Billions together and TV, I love watching TV with Hobie at night, but it doesn't always keep my attention. I'd rather quite honestly, like be on Instagram sometimes. So I <laughs> sneak it and I watch Instagram stories when we're watching Billions, but I can't put the volume on because I don't want Hobie to know that I'm not totally into it. And so when Tyler's stories come on, I know exactly what he's talking about and I can't hear a thing he's saying, but I feel more connected to him because I can see him. So I've started to do this a little bit more too, like follow suit in terms of adding the words. So I watch Insta stories a lot without the sound on because I'm a big Instagram story sneaker and mm -hmm. I need those words. So I feel like you've transformed it. So it's perfect. So thank you for that. <laughs> of course. Yes. Hopefully this will spread and everyone will do it. So now we can all sneakily watch each other's right? Instagram. Right? It's so perfect. I love it. <laughs> okay. So once our listeners begin to create stories with a strategy, which doesn't mean no fun, it just means that we want to be more deliberate. We want mm -hmm. some kind of transformation. We want to make an impact on our viewers. We want to have an experience. And then we also want to make sure that we keep the end in mind. So we've got the beginning, the middle, and the end. So now, now that we've done that, what's next? How do we take it to the next level and actually grow our email list through Instagram stories? Okay, so the first thing is with that strategy in place, I want you to get used to posting more consistently and more regularly. And also to uh, start using features with Instagram stories like polls that allow you to drive interaction. The polling feature is really fun. It's, it's a great way to get people just tapping on your Instagram story and engaging with what you're sharing. And also having conversations via direct messages, you need to do those strategies first because that is really what's going to teach your followers that you are actually engaging with them. That when you say something and they say something back to you, you are going to respond and then they can grow to expect that response and that engagement from you. So I want to walk you through a, a few strategies now that are going to help you keep the experience for your followers really native and as easy as possible for them. It's a really key thing to focus on here. 
Now, this does mean it will require a little bit more work from you and having a conversation with someone, but it's so worth it in the end because it just makes this this fact of growing a list or even getting people into a webinar or getting them to a product or a service so much more effective. And here's the thing. We all know that driving traffic off of a social media platform can be difficult as it is. And Instagram actually makes it a little bit tougher because we can't put clickable links in our post. We can't put links in our Instagram stories unless you're verified or you have a business profile and at least 10,000 followers. And so really the only link you have left is the link in your Instagram bio. But I actually get around this and I have swipe up, but I don't use it regularly because here's the honest thing is it's not as magical as people think it is. And I know that may be controversial for some yeah, folks. Talk and to I, me about <laughs> that. What are you talking about? Okay. The problem with the swipe up feature is that it's lazy. It's lazy. It's too passive for your followers. So instead of relying on the swipe up, or a lot of my students will just make the excuse, right? Like, I don't have 10,000 followers. I don't know if I'll ever have 10,000 followers. I'll never get to swipe up. So why would I even try this, right? Instead of relying on that as an excuse, why don't we figure out a way to work around that by having conversations through direct messages? Because you can send a link via a direct message and it is clickable for people who receive that message from you. So even though I have swipe up, I don't use it as much because I find it to be pretty passive for my audience. I want to engage with them and I want to make it a no brainer for them to either join my list or download my freebie or sign up for my webinar by having a conversation with them. So direct messages, it's where I talk to most of my potential students. It's where I answer questions. It's also really powerful as you're launching a product or talking about a service. Um, it's your way you're able to kind of squash those objections for folks through direct messages and even give them more value on top of what you're doing in stories. And here's some other cool things. I love using direct messages because I can hear my students' stories. I can learn more about their pain points and I can rip off their copy, right? If people are sending me the issues that they're having with Instagram, I can literally copy and paste those words into, you know, I, I'm much like you, right? I keep this document of pain points and ideas and copy that we can pull from. All of those conversations go into that. So as I'm creating copy to promote my offerings, I can pull from that right there, all through conversations I'm having in a direct message. Okay. So this is so good. And really guys, this is the reason I wanted Tyler to come on the show and talk to us because there is so much power in the DMs and I don't think we're taking advantage of this. Now, a few months back, I wasn't taking advantage of the DMs as much either. I had heard Tyler talk about it. So it was in my head. Then I went to my mastermind and Lewis Howes happened to be one of the guest speakers. And he was talking about how much business he does in the DMs. I'm like, what? And at the time, Jasmine Starr was sitting at my table at this mastermind and she shook her head like, Amy, seriously, it's in the DMs. And -hmm. then I talked to Tyler again and he's saying it's in the DMs. So I'm like totally sold on this. So for the last few months, all I've really paid attention to more than anything on Instagram beyond creating my stories is getting in those DMs and it is powerful. So I said, Tyler, you got to come on the show and talk about this because I really do think more people need to take advantage of it. So first of all, tell me this, because one of the things that comes up with my listeners is who's got time for that? I'm trying to do a million different things. Who has time to spend in their DMs? So first of all, I want to know how much time do you spend? But also, I already know that it's time well spent. So that's a given. But how much time do you spend? And how do you manage that? So on an average day, I'll get about 50 to 100 DMs. Whoa, that's a lot. It's a lot. And typically those are responses to my Instagram stories or people DMing me a specific question or maybe a new follower. And there's some spam thrown in there as well. So I am, I'm approaching it in a couple of ways. First of all, anytime I get on Instagram, I'm working as quickly as possible to clean out my direct messages and respond to comments. And I get it. This takes time. But for me, Instagram is really one of the few places where I, I am 
constantly marketing my business. Um, you know, I don't have a YouTube channel. I don't blog. I don't, I don't even have like a, a website. I have a landing page, Instagram and my email list. Like that's it for me and my business. So it's, it's where I have so many of these conversations. So on an average day, I would say I spend around an hour kind of spread out throughout the day. I try and be really intentional about spending some focused time on Instagram in the morning around lunchtime and again in the evening. But what I'm, I'm really conscious of responding to DMs as quickly as possible because what I find is once you get that backlog of like 10 or 20 or 100 DMs, it just seems impossible to respond to them. I've so been there. It's so true. (laughs) So responding as quickly as possible. The other thing is just knowing that not every DM requires you to write a long, heartfelt response, right? So if someone's responding to a funny Instagram story that you did with some laughing emojis, send some laughing emojis back or just drop them a little heart emoji through Instagram itself. Um, It doesn't have to always, you know, be some story or some conversation, uh, but just making sure that you're always responding. Because again, we're building habits in our audience here and teaching them that if they DM you, you're going to respond back to them. And that makes the relationship that much more valuable. So that's the thing. Like if you're going to do it, commit to doing it, block out some time throughout the day where you're going to be on Instagram anyway, responding to those DMs as quickly as possible. Now, one cool thing to note is that Instagram has just rolled out some brand new features for the inbox on Instagram. And if folks are listening and they don't have this yet, just be patient. As with all Instagram features, they take a long time to get to most people. (laughs) But um, these new features allow you to do filtering in your inbox. And it's so, so helpful. You can filter your messages by read and unread. And they also have a new star feature where you can kind of highlight certain messages that you want to keep up with or find later on. Before this, it was literally a black hole yes, <laughs> on, for on sure. Instagram in the DMs. But now those new tools for sorting and, f- and filtering your messages make it a lot easier to keep up with your with your DMs. I'm excited about that because I don't have those features yet, but maybe if I update my app, so I'm going to look for that because I agree. It does feel like a black hole sometimes. Yes. Now, one other thing I want to mention is once I started hearing Tyler talk about these DMs and my other friends that I mentioned, I became more intentional about it because if I don't have it scheduled, I'm the type of personality that I just won't do it. So I actually get into Asana and every day I have all my tasks in my project management tool, Asana. And one of them is daily Monday through Friday. And it says check DMs. And so every single morning I am in my DM. So if you want to chat with me, you send me a DM on Instagram because it is me and I'm in there and I'm deliberate about it. So it's going to happen. So if you need that extra help as well, schedule it as though it is a task of the day. I think it's more natural to Tyler because he teaches Instagram. He's in it all the time. But for those of us who aren't, you might need to put it as an action item every single day in your planner. So that's just one thing to think about. Okay. So we grow our email list through Instagram stories through the DM. Now I want you to tell me exactly how to do that because I'm not getting a hundred DMs a day. So what are you doing to get people to actually engage with you that way? And then how are you turning that into growing your email list? So like I said before, uh, establishing those really consistent posting habits for you and your business is the first step. So you have to make sure you are showing up on Instagram stories regularly. Um, for my students, I encourage them to try and do Instagram stories at least five days a week, you know, whenever they're on Instagram. Um, I'm also a big fan of actually posting in the feed a lot less often than you think you may need to. And that allows you to spend more time on Instagram stories. So showing up on Instagram stories really, really consistently and making sure that the content is great, valuable content. It doesn't always have to be educational. You don't always have to teach something or share something or show your process. It can be fun. It can be you. It can be personality, but it still needs to be valuable and really high quality content. And then the next step is to get in the habit of using calls to action throughout your Instagram story and especially at the end of your Instagram story because we need your followers to get in the habit of engaging with you. We need them to get into this habit of 
answering your polls and selecting an answer whenever you post a poll. We need them to get into the habit of sending you direct messages. And I call these strategies habit building strategies because we want to start really small with something as simple as a like on an Instagram post or engaging with a poll and grow to something really large, like a direct message where you can actually pitch to your potential customer or client. But building those habits just takes time. And I know that's something that A lot of times I hear from folks, you know, they start posting on Instagram stories every day for a week and they're like, why am I not selling anymore? (laughs) Right, right. Well, this takes time. You have to post consistently. You have to show up consistently. You have to create that content that has those calls to action, starting with really simple, easy questions like, what are you doing today? Or what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Or do you love Target as much as I do? And then having a conversation via a direct message. And then you can start asking those harder questions. You can start learning more about your audience. And then really getting to this place where you are using your Instagram stories as a place to invite your followers to participate in what you're doing or invite them to learn more about your product or service or a freebie that you have. It's really about this this idea of creating an invitation for people. So I've created this this little system that I use myself, and I like to call it an Instagram story opt-in sandwich because who doesn't love a sandwich? (laughs) Right. As you are using Instagram stories to grow your list, this is what I want you to do. And this is the process. The first thing is you're going to start your Instagram story by actually introducing the opt-in. Like that is the introduction to what you're doing. This can be a lead magnet, a content upgrade, any kind of free resource. It can even be a webinar if you wanted it to be. And I want you to talk about what this thing includes and why it is valuable. And then after you've done that, I want you to share a testimonial or a review. And this is really important here. We want to share something that really shows them like, hey, this is really interesting. This is really valuable. This is something that I'm going to find use in. So that can be a screenshot from someone. That can be a quote from someone. Just something that really proves that what you're sharing is valuable for them. And then you, I want you to invite your followers to send you a direct message to learn more about getting their own copy. So this is where we're going to depart a little bit from what you would typically do, because a lot of folks with the swipe up, they would say, I have a new freebie. This is what it is. Swipe up to get it. And that's all they would do. Or without the swipe up, they may say, I have a new freebie. This is what it is. Go to the link in my bio to get this thing. And that's all that they would do. Instead of being that passive with what we're doing, I want you to take ownership and be really active in how you are getting people to this free resource that you've created. So once you've done this of sharing what this freebie or this resource is, sharing a testimonial or review, that's when the invitation comes into play. And you're going to invite them to send you a direct message to learn more, to get their hands on a copy. And then you're going to have a conversation with them. So this is really where your personality, your brand voice comes into play. But for me, when I do this, when when I say, I have a new resource I've created, this is what it is, this is why it's valuable, shoot me a DM, I'd love to share it with you. Once people get to my, my inbox, then I have a conversation of, hey, thanks so much for sending me a DM, I'd love to share this with you, Um, here's the link to access it. Or... What specific issue are you having when it comes to the topic that this thing addresses? And then I'll say, hey, I think this would be a great resource for you. Here's how you can get your hands on it and send them the link to that landing page directly. So it's really about having this conversation and not being super passive. And honestly, Amy, I think it just people get kind of lazy in what they're doing and they just kind of put it out there. And then we wonder why people aren't downloading our freebie or aren't getting to our webinar or getting into our funnel. Instead, I want you to take ownership of this whole process process and share the content, talk about why they need it, and then have the conversation through a direct message to get someone over to that thing. And of course, making sure you're always thanking them for their time and even checking back with them about whether or not they downloaded it a day later, if you wanted to do something like that. It's just really about having this conversation with folks. It's, oh, it's, it's what so makes all the difference. It is. It's so good. It feels very grassroots to me. And in a really <laughs> noisy social media world, this is how you get personal. So I want to tell a quick story. When I was doing the B-School promotion, I had a quiz created, how to know if you are ready for B-School. And so we had this quiz and I had emailed it to my list and I had used it in different ways. But where I saw it show up to be really powerful is that I started to pay attention. This is around the time I started to pay attention more to my DMs. So every time I got a message in my DM about B-School, I'm not sure if it's right for me because of this or that, or here's why I'm hesitating because I did what 
Tyler says, and I ask questions like, if you're still on the fence, let me know why in a DM. And so people would let me know why. And then when it was appropriate, I could say, I've got a quiz. I want you to take this quiz. And then I didn't stop there. I gave them the link to the quiz. And when somebody gives you a link through a DM, you're more likely to pay attention than a swipe up. I do totally Mm -hmm. agree with Tyler on that one. I never thought of it that way, but it makes perfect sense. When you want a connection with me and I say, I've got something special just for you, click here, you go click it. But then I said, I want you to take the quiz and come back to this DM and tell me what your results were because the results give you four different results. So they would take the quiz, come back and share with me. And then I would say, do these results ring true to you? Do you really agree with them? If they say yes, then they're ready to join B-School. If they say no, we talk about it. It was the coolest exchange that I got to do a lot of the time. Some of you listening probably had this exchange with me. So I didn't just say, go click the link and I'll see you later. I had them come back and give me some details about that. That was really powerful. Yeah. I love having these conversations with people because first of all, it allows you to qualify your leads so much more effectively. You can literally say to someone like, Hey, this is not a great fit for you. (laughs) And you can, you can help save people time and that energy and what they're doing in their business. And it's also a great way. I think Amy, just that effort when people are signing up through something like that, when you've told them, yes, this is a great fit for you. Think about how much in the long run you're cutting down on refunds. You're making their experience so much more meaningful and so much more valuable. And you are just making that affinity and that relationship they have with you. You're taking it through the roof because they're They're like, oh my goodness, she took time to have a conversation with me about whether or not this is right. I can trust her even more knowing she has my best interest in mind. And the next time I have a question or she has something that she wants to offer me, then I know she's going to be there. She's going to help answer if this is the right fit, or she's just, she's making sure that I have the resources I need to be successful. I, it's so, so powerful. It really is. I want to push this a little further. I want you to give your example of using a poll around webinars. Okay. Yes. I love this. Me too. Um, So, and actually, Amy, this is when you and I first kind of started chatting through direct messages on Instagram. I was doing a webinar and I used a, a poll to say, hey, I'm hosting a free webinar around this topic. Are you interested in that? Or does that sound like something you want to learn about? Yes or no. And then for everyone who answered yes, they got a direct message from me. So they got a direct message saying, hey, I'm so glad you're interested in this webinar. Do you have any questions about this topic? Or what's the biggest issue you're having with this topic that I'm going to teach about? Or here's the link to sign up. And actually, Amy, I think I sent you. I was like, hey, I know you said you're interested. I'm going to send you the link. I love it. (laughs) Yes. And I found that to be a really effective way because, again, you're not being passive. You're not just relying on a swipe up or a link in a bio to get people to something. You're making it really engaging and personable for them. And you're also letting people self-qualify whether or not the thing that you're talking about is the right fit for them. It helps you not just keep talking about the same thing over and over and over again so you can have those really meaningful, pointed conversations. Okay, but you also did something really cool where you asked people if they've signed up for your webinar yet. So this is a little bit down the campaign. And if they Mm -hmm. said no, you would DM them saying, I noticed you haven't signed up yet. Here's the link. Oh, yes. (laughs) Oh, yeah, totally. Good. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I do that. And then that gets that lets me get in the DMs too and say like or even say like, hey, why haven't you signed up? Or is this not the right fit for you? Or is this not the right time? Or do you want to learn about something else? Right. Unlimited opportunities here by just taking that ownership and having those conversations with people. And it it has made all the difference for my business by having these strategies in place because it makes everything so much more personable and so much more engaging and I mean, it's, it's changed everything for, for me and how I do business. I totally agree. Me too. And I'm so glad I started to use the DMs. I want to get some metrics from you. So give us an example of a recent Instagram story promotion where you put all of this in place and grew your list. I want some specifics like the names you collected, like how many names, how many conversions came from this effort. Do you have anything like that? Of course I do. I did my homework, Amy Porter. I love it. And I'm going to do you better. I actually have three examples of some ways I've done this recently. So the first way is I'm I'm planning a live event later this year. And I was trying to figure out how I could promote this and not really burn out my list or or make it something that's going to be too overwhelming for people. So it was a simple like, 
Hey, I, hopping on my Instagram stories saying, Hey, this thing is happening. This is when it's happening. This is what it's about. If you want to learn more, shoot me a DM. So um, we added 89 people to the wait list in 24 hours doing that, which was really exciting. The last time I did a live launch of my program, the week after the doors closed, we did kind of a week of content around talking about some success stories, sharing testimonials from our new students, and then a really simple call to action. Like, if you want to know when this opens up next time, shoot me a DM. I'd love to, to add you to our wait list. We had a 238 people to our wait list in one week, which was wow. really exciting. Yes. Okay, but this is the one that blew my mind, and that is the fact that uh, at the beginning of April of this year, I ran a one-day sale on my membership community for my birthday, and I only promoted it on Instagram stories. Okay. And we did $2,400 in 12 hours, Stop which was really it. exciting. That's fantastic. Yeah. And then those people converted into our monthly membership. And of those folks that have converted, we've added about $5,000 a month in monthly recurring revenue uh. through – Direct messages on Instagram. Are you kidding me? It just blows my mind. <laughs> that is it. life-changing. $5,000 a month. Did I hear you right? That's right. $5,000 yeah. a month. You were able to generate that through DMs. Like $5,000 a month is life-changing to most people. So that is huge, Tyler. It is. And it's all just having those conversations with people and letting people know this thing's going on. I'd love to share more with you about it. Let me talk you through it. Let me answer your questions. Let me let you know if it's not the right fit for you. It's 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 such a such a great way to have those conversations and have that connection. And I'm a big proponent of this because you really don't want to just send people to the link in your bio because they won't go there. Right? It's too right. much work. You don't want to use the swipe up feature all the time because it gets old and it's really passive. You don't want just to send a link in a DM because you can't ensure that people are always going to do that, right? You need to have a conversation around it. You also don't want to be really overly salesy and promotional when you're doing this either. I want you to always think about this as an invitation um, for your followers to connect with you, to learn more about you, and for you to solve a problem for them. That's what these DMs allow you to do. So good. Love it. I am so glad you shared some of those specifics. I had no idea you had that much great success. I mean, I knew you were doing good, but that makes me extra excited. Perfect way to close out this episode. Tyler, I cannot thank you enough for providing step-by-step. -step. I mean, that's what I love to do on these episodes. You gave us a roadmap on Instagram stories, and I know that these strategies are going to make a huge impact for those that are listening. Remember, you can get the freebie that Tyler created for us at amyporterfield.com forward slash 219 download so that you can have all the notes that he went over and really make them actionable for yourself as well. Now, before we go, Tyler, please tell my listeners how they can best get in touch with you. And I kind of think I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> you may be surprised to hear the best place you can find me is on Instagram at Tyler J. McCall. I'd love to connect with you there. We have content going up pretty much on a daily basis. I'd love to chat with you in the DMs. And you can also check out tylerjmccall.com to learn more about Instagram and what we do. Awesome. Thank you so very much, Tyler, for being on the show. I know my listeners are going to go check you out if they haven't done so already. And I cannot wait to dive into those DMs as well. Thank you so very much. Of course. Thanks for having me, Amy. Take care. So there you have it. I hope you love this interview with Tyler as much as I have. He's so much fun to talk to, and he has so many smart strategies that are doable. And you know I love a step-by-step -step doable action plan. Now, speaking of an action plan, don't forget to get the freebie for today's episode, amyporterfield.com forward slash 219. So just go to amyporterfield.com forward slash 219. It will take you to the show notes with all the details about today's episode, but you will also see a big box where you could click a link and download the freebie from today's episode. Okay, I cannot wait to see you again, same place, same time next week. Make it a great week until we meet again. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com.